Welcome everybody, this is Mr. Murphy. I'm gonna be taking you through the last lesson of logs. This is our lesson on natural logs. Uh, hopefully everybody's staying healthy, doing well. Uh, if you have any questions, obviously you can direct them to your, your classroom teachers at the conclusion of this. Um, okay, so with natural logs, the biggest thing is natural logs are logs with the base of E. So if you think about it, if you had just your regular log with nothing written there, that had your imaginary base, if you know, if, if you just saw a log of X, what's imaginary in this spot, right? You'd have your imaginary 10. All this is, is there's an imaginary E value down there. This is our Euler's number. Um, positive number between two and three, if you, if you check on your calculator, you could, um, you could actually plug in E and, and see, you know, to at least to a few decimal places what it equals. Um, these are logs still, it's just a natural log. So all the properties that you've learned in the last week or so hold true for our natural logs. All right, so when we're trying to figure out what the natural log of E equals, um, easiest way to do that is if you think about it, if we set it up, if we say natural log of E equals X, uh, by now we should be feeling pretty confident with how we're solving, how we're setting up to go from log form to exponential form. So like we just said, there's an imaginary base of E down there. So if we write this in exponential form, we're saying e to the x equals, right? And that equals, we're kind of just looping around, that equals e, right? So if e to the x equals e, and then this would be raised to an imaginary one, we can say, all right, that means that x equals one. Uh, to take that all the way back, that means the natural log of e just equals one. So where this is gonna be useful, whenever you see our e value within and in any of these problems, you're gonna to wanna to use natural logs instead of just our, our regular logarithms. So on our first problem example here, we've got nine equals e to the x, right? So we're trying to solve for the exponent. So at this point, we should hopefully remember that whenever you're trying to solve for the exponent, you wanna take the log of each side. Because e is involved, we wanna take the natural log of each side. So I'll kinda of make a note, but just take natural log of each side. So if we do that, we got natural log of nine equals natural log of e to the x. We said that all of our properties hold true. So that means that we can take this exponent and bring that down in front. So now we have natural log of nine equals x times the natural log of e. We just said that this equals one. So the natural log of nine just equals x. We just plug that straight into our calculator to get our answer at this point. So we got natural log of nine equals X. I'll give everybody a second to kind of find the, the button on the calculator, but we've just been doing logs. It's the button right below it. You'll see the little LN on there. So if you just hit LN of nine, you should be getting your value for, for X. And I got that X equals 2.197. All right. In practice problem number two, the natural log is already in both sides. So in this one, all we have to do is just use our property where we bring the 0.55 down in front. So we've got natural log of 6.2 equals 0.55 T times the natural log of E. The natural log of E equals one, so I'm almost just gonna kinda cross that out because it, it equals one. And now to get T all by itself, we're just dividing both sides by 0.55. And again, this is all just calculator work at this point. Put that right into the calculator and hopefully everyone is getting 3.317 as our solution for that. All right, example three, a little bit trickier because there's one step required before we get into what we were doing. And you probably remember this from, from the previous week, but we want to isolate the exponential. So what that means, the part we're trying to solve for is in the exponent, right? In order to do that, we need to isolate the exponential. So in this case, that two is attached by multiplication. We need to get the two out of there. So we're gonna divide the two on both sides and we're gonna get five equals e to the 0.18x. From there, we're gonna solve it the same way we solved the last two problems. Take the natural log of each side. So we've got natural log of five, all in one step. I'm gonna bring the 0.18x down in front. The natural log of e just becomes our, our one. Divide both sides by 0.18. Plug that into the calculator and hopefully we're all getting X equals 8.941. All right, if at any point it feels like I'm moving a little bit too quick, you can just pause the video. You can go back and watch it again. Uh, there should be answer keys posted on Google Classroom for all of you guys to, to check this stuff out at your own pace as well. All right, so some practice ones. If we're looking at these, uh, taking a second to kind of identify where they look like. 
when I look at both example one and two here, it looks like these are exactly the same as that example three that we just did. We have the exponent is, is where our unknown value is, but we have to isolate that exponential first. So with both of these, we're gonna isolate our exponential. So in this case, divide by four, right? So we're gonna get what 400 equals and then e to the 0 0.045t. Take the natural log of each side. And when we do that, we can bring down the exponent out in front. That goes away. We divide by the 0 0.045, plug that into our calculators, and I got that our t value was approximately 133.14. All right, with number two, we're just gonna divide the five on each side. All right, we're left with two equals e to the 5k. Natural log of each side again. Getting a little repetitive at this point, but hopefully it's kind of sinking in. All right, that becomes a one. Divide by the five there, and we should get a k value of 0 0.139. Other than that, there's really just kind of, as long as you remember all of your properties from logs from the previous couple days, you should be able to solve any problem. So the, the kind of the gist of it here is just understanding that even though it looks a little bit scarier maybe, it is just the same exact thing as a regular logarithm just with the base of E on any single one of these. Um, what I would suggest for the rest of this lesson, if, if you're feeling pretty good with the, with the practice problems, um, you know, maybe you can kind of just try some of these on your own, pause the video, try them out, maybe skip to the end where you'd see it all, all filled in or just check your keys online. Um, I will go through each of the problems kind of one by one. So if, if you feel like you need the extra help, you know, keep watching the video and, and you can kind of follow along with me. Um, if, if you do decide to try the rest of these on your own, just remember that there will be uh, some form of, of exit slip posted by your classroom teacher. So just make sure that you're, you're completing that as well and kind of checking your work. All right, for those of you that, that want to kind of continue on um, with this one, this is a problem we have natural log already taken of each side. So we can just go right ahead and bring that exponent down in front. So we've got our natural log of 4.5 is just gonna equal the 0 0.031t. I'm getting rid of just the natural log of e, I'm kind of just um, removing that because it's equal to one. Divide, All right, we're just using our algebra skills at this point and we should get t equals 48.519. With our second one, the e is isolated, but exponent is what we don't know. So again, we need to take the natural log of each side. Natural log of 25 is 0 0.075y times the natural log of e. That goes away. We divide by the 0 0.075 on each side, and we get to y equals 42.918. All right, so the, the next couple are, are very similar to that. So what I say is let's, let's skip over these. You can try them out um, and then check your work with the, with the key that you're gonna find online. Uh, let's jump to one or two of them that might have some properties with logs or something that looks a little bit different. So if we jump down to number nine here, this obviously looks a little bit different. One side, the natural log is already present in the equation. The other side is not. So hopefully you remember when you're in, um, you know, from our logs, if you had log base b of x equals y, uh, easiest way once you had it as a single log equal to a number was to rewrite it into exponential form. So we would take that value and say, all right, that's the same as saying b to the y equals x. It's the same exact thing that we wanna do with our natural logs. We just have to remember what the imaginary base is down there. So we have a little e as our base. So now if we rewrite this in exponential form, so I'll kind of just make a note, write in exponential form, and then we'll be able to solve it. So this is the same as saying e to the fifth equals x. So at this point, if you're looking at it and you're saying, well, there's two unknown values, how are we gonna solve this? That's actually not true. E is a, is a, is a actual number that we can use on our calculator here. Uh, this is one of our transcendental numbers. So if we, on the calculator, um, find our e button, and I think if you just do second natural log, that, that has it where it's already raised to some value. So if we plug in e to the fifth, um, take a second and do that on the, the calculators right there while I'm doing it, I got 148.413. So at this point, it's all just calculator work. 
going forward from here, it's kind of the same idea with all of these. So with this one, we would just say e squared equals x plus one, because we've got our imaginary base of e, rewriting it in exponential form. We plug the, the e squared just right into our, our calculator and we subtract one. So if we do e squared minus one, we get our x value. And I got that x comes out to 6.389 for that one. All right, so if you already have it as just a single natural log equal to a number, just rewrite it in exponential form. So again, let's kind of jump one to, to one that maybe looks a little bit different. Um, let's look at number 12 because this uses some of our, our properties of logs here. So remember, if you have multiple logs on one side equal to multiple. With our logs, we were trying to say, all right, if we got log base b of x equals log base b of y, we were able to jump to say, all right, that means that x equals y. So we want to do the same same thing that we would have done with our, our regular logs. Um, we just want to combine all of our logs to be one, you know, one log on one side equal to one log on another. Same thing with our natural logs. So hopefully we remember that if you are adding to combine them, you need to multiply. So if this is going to say natural log of e to the third times e squared times e equals our natural log of e to the 2x. All right. So if, if we simplify this, this is saying natural log of we're going to have e to the what? That's going to be e to the sixth because when you multiply, you add those exponents equals natural log of e to the 2x. All right. At this point, we can just drop the natural laws. We've got e to the sixth equals e to the 2x. Right. That means that six has to equal 2x. Divide the two and we get just x equals three. So. Can't forget all those properties that you've been working on for the last week or so. Um, they all work with our natural logs all the same. Um, kind of looking ahead, all of these problems are, are pretty much stuff that we've already modeled throughout the lesson here. So what, what I would suggest is maybe for the, the remaining time that you have in your period here, try these out. Um, jump on classroom, check the answer keys, see how you're doing. If you have any questions, obviously direct those questions to your classroom teacher. And don't forget to, to complete your exit slips. All right. Thank you very much.